Hello again, and we are continuing our conversation about Rome. Uh, hopefully you watched the last video about Roman roads and how they were made and why they're important. And now we're going to talk about types of transportation and what you would do to get from here to there on those roads. So once the Roman roads opened up for public transportation and, uh, and, and shipping and transferring of goods back and forth, things went crazy in Rome. Uh, it wasn't just the military that was using the roads anymore. Now it was everybody. Yeah, very cool. So types of transportation. If you were in Rome, this is what you would be using to get around besides just walking on your two feet because, well, you're only going to go a few miles a day if you do that, so you need to have some sort of way to get around. That's faster than your feet. And no, bicycles weren't invented yet. Sorry. So first, uh, you could go by boat. boat. Boats are great, right? You don't, you don't even need roads. Just use a boat. Uh, to be completely honest, Romans avoided travel by sea whenever possible. Uh, they didn't like to sail in the winter months because it was very windy, lots of storms, very dangerous. And, well, boats were great and all, but still pretty unsafe. So... What was another way to get around? Well, let's find out. So Rome, Ro uh, Romans would be using the roads. And uh, Rome was crazy noisy at night. Rome was noisy every day. Uh, the city of Rome itself, the main capital city, was filled. It was packed. And because there were so many people, there were actually rules in the city itself. No wheeled vehicles were allowed in the cities between sunrise and 4 p.m. So no carriages, no carts, anything that had wheels were allowed because it was just for the people to walk the roads because there were that many of them. Uh, all deliveries were made in the evenings, from the evenings from 4 p.m., until sunrise, which meant if you were making a delivery, you would have to wait till the evening to do it. But that meant you were making deliveries in the dark. Uh, and sometimes in the summer nights, or summer, yeah, summer nights, you know, the sun hadn't set yet, but otherwise you were pretty much doing deliveries in the dark uh, and by candlelight. But all wheeled items at night. So during the day, well, you walked, unless you were rich. Uh-huh. If you were rich, uh, very wealthy citizens were carried by litters, which is this top picture here. You got to recline back and oh, go this way, go that way, go over there. Yes, oh, yes, go over there. And you were reclining like you were just being carried around on a couch eating grapes. It was fantastic. Uh, or you would be carried around in a sedan chair. Uh, carried All these would be carried by slaves. A uh, sedan chair was literally like a chair that was covered. Uh, it's this bottom picture right here. And it was like you were being carried around in your own personal chair. I'd go for the litter. It's much more comfortable. You can just relax. Close the little drapes when you wanted privacy. You know, very fun, I guess. Most cities also had a ring road, so a bypass that you could go. Uh, if you were traveling and you needed to bypass the city, you needed to go past the city uh, and not actually go into the city, then you could follow the ring road to go around it. This allowed for faster travel. So in the city, it was crazy busy. And, well, if you were making a delivery, you could not go through the city until after 4 p.m. So you could go around the outside of the city, such as this city right here. This is the city walls. If you were coming up, you could just go around the outside and completely bypass the city and continue on your way. A city that has that uh, is actually Washington, D.C. 
has something called a ring road to allow people to go around the city itself uh, if you don't have to go through it. It you know it's faster for traffic wise. And you have to go through and wait for all the traffic lights and uh, so you can go around the city. Outside the city gates, a traveler or a viator could hire different kinds of vehicles to travel with. And we are about to read, not read, we're about to learn about them right now. Whoa, oh no, go back. There we go. So a two-passenger, two-wheeled, mule-drawn cart was called a sissium. So many of these, you're going to see pictures. Um, some of these are printings or inscribings or carvings, actually, from the age of Rome, uh, where we get the visual to see these things. So this is a sissium. Up to two people could sit. It was pulled by either one or two horses. And it, would, it didn't carry much space. Uh, there wasn't much for storage. There might have been a little box that you sat on here, but otherwise, yeah, that would be what you would drive to and from where you were going. If you were a wagon, and you were on a wagon with four wheels, it was mule drawn, uh, might have also been oxen drawn, and it was covered, like this one up here, you can see is covered with a little room to recline. That was called a karuka, a karuka. Then there was also a four-wheeled mule-drawn wagon that had room for many passengers and luggage, and that was a reda. So this bottom one right here is a reda. The two up top here are karukas. Karuka. Ooh, that one's hard to see. Uh, in here it says... Two, if it, what? Uh, two large spoked wheels, a cart with two large spoked wheels and removable sides that was typically pulled by oxen was a carus. A carus. Yes, so carus. Um, removable sides or doors, as in this one right here. Four wheels. Uh, sometimes four wheels as in this one, but mainly, mostly two wheels, uh, removable sides, almost like a, like a, well, like a wagon, uh, pulled by oxen, could carry lots of things. That was a carus. And then there were the two solid wheels used for hauling produce and not people. That was called a plaustrum. And four wheels pulled by oxen, uh, sometimes more than two oxen, and very heavy-duty freight, maybe the wagon was even longer, would be a saracum. So most Roman travelers could travel about five miles per hour a day. That's like from the school... To the Dairy Queen. I think there's a Dairy Queen five miles that way. There should be a Dairy Queen five miles that way. Five miles is not a lot. It just, it, if you're traveling the city of Rome, you could get from one end to the other side of Rome, not a problem. Um, but you're not getting much further outside of Rome. If you were in a cart, you could travel about 25 miles on a good day. So from here to the Wisconsin border. So if you're in, in Forest Lake to the Wisconsin border, you'll get there in a day. Not 15 minutes like we do now, in about a day. Uh, it was quite dangerous to travel. There were highwaymen, robbers, thieves, all up and down the roads of Rome. And if you were not with the army or you were not uh, well protected or you did not have someone in your party or your group that was going with you, uh, if they didn't have 
weapons of some sort, a spear, a shield, a knife, um, it can be very dangerous. Uh, you could certainly lose all of your goods. You could lose your your uh, your money and uh, your tr what you're traveling with. If you happen to be a messenger and you need to get some emergency information from one city to the next, and if you had a change of horses, and if they were running at top speed, you could get 50 miles in in a day. So think about how far that is. And if you can't, if you're not sure, uh, 50 miles, that's from Forest Lake to Shakopee. Shakopee is where Valley Fair is. You might know Valley Fair. You could get there in a day, one day. It would take you one whole day of traveling, eight to 12 hours of traveling to get from here to Shakopee. Yeah, it took a long time to travel. Cars are a great thing. They travel much faster uh, and get us places much quicker. So 50 miles in a day. As for accommodations, well, say you needed to get from here to Shakopee in one day, but you weren't on a messenger horse, it was going to take you two or three days to get there just by cart and, or with wagon. There would be inns on the sides of the roads, like little hotels or hostels uh, on the sides of roads, but most inns were very dirty. You would end up staying with your livestock in the same room. Uh, you'd be under the same roof with them. So it wasn't a, you know, park your cow out front and go up to your room. No, it would be a, all right, this is the stall that you've rented out for the night. Uh, this is where your horses sleep. This is where you sleep. You're sleeping in the hay with your horses or your cows. You're all in the same room. Yeah. Uh, and it was actually quite dangerous to be staying at inns at night if you didn't have someone uh, watching over your stuff. Uh, and, and taking breaks, uh, uh, taking taking turns, um, watching over your things, you might be robbed. People would sneak in at night uh, and, and steal things, and it would be not very safe. Uh, lots of fires. Remember, you're in, and you're in an inn, you're in a, a hotel, but your bedding is made of straw, and the only way you're seeing is at night is with the light from a from an oil lamp, oil lamp, straw. Yeah, it, lots of fires, lots and lots of fires. Many wealthy Romans, so if you had a little bit more money, you would have houses or mansions on uh, in, in little intervals between where you were going, say, you were a very famous senator, so you had lots of money, and you lived in Rome or you did business in Rome, but you actually lived outside of the Roman border. You lived, you know, a few days away. Well, you wouldn't be able to make that trip all at once, so you'd have a few little houses that you could stop at along the way on your journey and spend the night, and you might have some servants there as well that would wait on you when you arrived. Families also grouped together and would have uh, hospice or uh, other small little houses in different cities. So they would agree to help each other out, give give each other shelter uh, when, when they arrived. Very similar to a timeshare. You'd have a house, maybe three or four families would all have a part of that house. They'd all own a piece of that house. And... You know, one week this family would stay there. A second week, another family arriving in from out of town would be staying there, and you'd be sharing uh, the costs of that house, but then you'd always have that house available in case you needed it. Hospice can be, uh, in Latin, can be either translated as guest or host. So either you were the host and helping people out, or you were a guest and you were new to the house. So... If you were super wealthy, you had fancy, fancy houses that you and only you and your family would stay up. Otherwise, you might have some sort of timeshare set up so you didn't have to go to an inn and pay money to sleep in the straw and the hay. 
with the animals. So traveling was not all that exciting back in the age of Rome. We certainly didn't have things like MapQuest, GPS, little you know devices on our on our phones that tell us where we're going. None of that. We also didn't have they didn't have music to jam to in the car. Turn the radio on. No, nah, there's no radio. So my questions to you are. What would be the challenges with traveling back in the time of ancient Rome? What would you miss most if you had to travel like a Roman? And what benefits would there be to traveling like a Roman? Report back your answers to these questions in either a Flipgrid or a submission video. And I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.